I'm making this video for anyone out there who has just heard the news about Eddie McPherson. I'm currently going through the stages of grief and I think I'm currently in, in shock, I'm in denial. Uh, for those of us who know Eddie, uh, you could know him and him not change your life uh, for the better. And so the healthy thing to do is to talk about this, not simply for me, but also for you. Uh, recently, actually just a few minutes ago, I uploaded some lost footage, uh, VHS tape footage, uh, back when he was the youth minister at the church I grew up in in the early 90s. And uh, so I'll also put the, a link to that in here as well. If you want to see Eddie being Eddie, doing what Eddie uh, did in character, uh, you can see he actually... We found some, my brother-in-law found an old VHS of when Eddie was making a video promo or two or three for the youth group to watch before he walked into the room. And so that's what you're seeing if, if you check that out. So again, there's a link in the description of this video. Uh, but I feel that what's relevant is for me to tell how Eddie influenced my own life. And you can feel free to share in the comments how he uh made such a, a great influence on your own. But for me, I've known Eddie McPherson most of my life. Back when I was in elementary school, uh, he was going to the church I was going to at the time, Second Baptist in Fort Payne, Alabama. And he was doing, he, he loved to write plays and musicals. And there was a play called Captain Gillibo. And I was chosen as one of the island boys. So my job, was to collect seashells and my last name being shell there was a pun in that so it was funny uh, but it was funny because i had a ziploc bag and i had the seashells in there when it was my time to come out i would just try to hide the fact that they were in a ziploc bag and just dump them out and i was collecting them and that was it was eddie's idea uh, so that was i i had maybe a line or two a speaking part in that but after that uh went well uh, then he cast me in a play called the Outcast, a musical that he wrote in there, and so I was this, I was the member of this like gang. I was the, I mean, I was like in third grade, had a leather jacket, and they threw me in a garbage can, and it was a, it was a, you know, story about outcast and finding acceptance and that sort of thing. But every year, Eddie would run a new play, and I would keep getting cast, and in each year, it would be a more significant role, and so uh, all the way through high school, I was in Eddie's plays, and eventually, I had moved to a different church, Menville. Well, he ended up becoming the youth minister there. And so we were definitely in this right place at the right time. And it's funny because, for, and people have a hard time believing this now, but I promise you I was a shy kid until Eddie McPherson. He's what changed me. He's He was the one who got me up there on stage in these plays. And talk about a character arc, absolutely. I was the shy kid until Eddie. And so gradually, as I had more stage time, and then I was volunteering to be in plays, and you know that's why uh, they say that uh, research has shown that most people fear public speaking more than anything, even th than death itself. And uh, you know, people like Eddie and myself, well, we definitely didn't fear public speaking more than anything else. We we loved it, and if it weren't for Eddie, I wouldn't uh, have have learned to to think that way as well. And so I also uh, began playing music in, in junior high, learning guitar and singing. But even that part of me, I don't think could have happened if it weren't for Eddie getting me to be in those plays. And so uh, I know for me, uh, I'm again, I'm definitely going through uh, my denial stage right now. Uh, but I, Eddie was such a big part of my my youth. And I, I can tell you undeniably, I would not be the adult I am if I weren't for him uh, being present in my youth. I mean, you have people in your family that mold you and guide you and ultimately help you have your identity as an adult. But then there's those people that are, I want to say close family friends, where, but it's like by default, they, they are as close as family because you know them that well. Uh, and so Eddie was... Uh, Definitely, he, he, he was so caring and so loving, accepted everybody uh, at, the, at the youth group that he was at. Now, after, uh, after ninth grade, he then went to become a youth minister uh, in Louisville. And I remember, we, 
I, I got to go visit him with my one of my good friends, Jeremy Taylor. We took a road trip up there to Louisville, and I guess at that time we were able to drive, so we must have just turned 16. And that's one of the reasons I still love Louisville, Kentucky to this day. I love visiting up there. But the first time was when we went to go visit Eddie, and then he eventually made his way over to Atlanta. Uh, but, I mean, I, I know that so many parts of, of, of me are because of Eddie. My, you know, granted we could say, well, okay, well, I always had a love for writing and the creative writing was always my favorite subject in school. And then that played out as I had the ability to be on stage and, and play music and that sort of thing. Eddie was always writing plays. And, and the last time I saw Eddie, that's something I told him. I said, you know, your thing was always plays and musicals, writing these, putting on these performances. And for me, uh, you know, I've got my blog, I've got my YouTube channels. And, you know, even when I, when I have time to do music, Ultimately, I, I not only can relate to you and that you have this passion, you, you have this creation that you want people uh, to be able to see and entertain by. You know, the song in, in Nirvana uh, where it says, here we are now, entertain us. You know, people like Eddie and myself, we're the people entertaining people for the sake of, this is what we love doing. We love connecting with people. And so those are the thoughts I have about, about Eddie and, and, and only, only encouraging things uh, come to mind when I think when I think of, of Eddie. And so there you go. I'm going to let you have the mic. And if you want to leave any comments uh, below and, and feel free to share your stories that, you know, what would Eddie want right now? I, I would say Eddie would want us to be able to to share those good memories. And and yeah, I mean, grief is part of it. Eddie would want us to grieve. That, that's part of the human experience. But uh, definitely. I know that there are so many people that, that uh, Eddie uh, touched in, in his life. And so I'm going to go ahead and let you do that right here in the comments. Uh, but definitely I thank God for Eddie being a part of my life. Uh, I undeniably would be a completely different person and I wouldn't be as good of a person <laughs> if it weren't for Eddie. All right, comments right here.